Hey guys, this is Matthias, and in this video I want to talk about one of the most debated, hated, and raged at topics in Planet 2, Air to Ground. So let me just explain to you my thought process here, and why I'm flying the way I'm flying. Uh, in the beginning here I'm just uh, cutting a little bit back and forward in order to make sure that this guy won't hit me with his lightning. It would be very damaging if he had AP. Anyway, at this point we are attacking Manny Tower. And there are two anti-air turrets at that base, and there could of course be other anti-air. So what I'm doing here is that I'm flying as low as I can. I try to stick to the north side of the road here, and try to take cover from these little hills in order to make sure that they don't see me. And I take a quick peek here, and I see that the anti-air turret is shooting at another target. And luckily the eastern turret is down. So I'm able to pick off two guys here, and then I go to the opposite side of the tower compared to where the uh, active anti-air turret is and I try to find another couple of guys to hit find one here and then I disengage and I get I think two of those guys now being that I'm low on ammo I fly over to Freyr amp station resupply and then I try to do exactly the same thing again now flying low like this is of course uh, risky in itself now I'm pretty sure that there are no enemy tanks around here, even though there's no way of being 100% certain. Another danger is that it's quite difficult to spot enemy air if they see you from above. You can of course use the free look, but while you're flying this low, um, you might want to stay away from using the free look actually, you might crash into the ground. Anyway, this was quite successful, I d don't think they saw me coming, and so before I engage I take a little quick look. I see that uh, there are a few targets, and also see that the anti-air turret is engaged with, uh, I'm, I'm not really sure what, but at least it's not me. While picking off a couple of guys there with the last part of that clip, I was able to damage this max, and eventually I was able to pick it off. That is quite unusual that I can uh, use the Banshee this way without being shot at. Holy shit, I, fe I feel like spicy. Oh, I See, after that second time at Many Tower, there was no going back there anymore. Now, the air to ground weapons for the three ESFs are very different. The light PPA of the Venus Sovereignty is. Um, it, it has more sustained fire, it has uh, more potential, more killing potential over a longer period of time. The problem is, of course, that with an ESF, you can rarely stay in an area where there is a lot of uh, potential kills for a long period of time. So now when it comes to comparing the air hammer with the light PPA and uh, the Banshee, I have already covered that in an uh, earlier video and the link to that video will be in the description. So now the reaction from a lot of people when they see footage uh, such as what you see in this video can sometimes be very very strong. And it always has been, even since beta. And in the beginning it was mostly about the rocket pods. And the reactions back then was completely different to what is now. It was this consistent stream of flaming about how bad all these pilots were, how newbie it was and how skillless it was. And all this flame mostly ca came from people that couldn't fly themselves. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of so-called balanced opinions was mostly just frustration. Nowadays, in most situations, people are more aware, and if you're ever able to farm the same place, the same base, or the same sunderer for more than about a minute, then it is just because the people spawning in there are having some serious miscommunication, and uh, they are not taking the threat seriously, and they're not really paying attention to what's happening. It is extremely rare that uh, I can do what you see me doing here, basically just hovering over an enemy sunderer, picking off uh, infantry players left and right. On the other hand, I do fly a lot more risky nowadays since I uh, started playing Light Assault uh, more and more. I really don't care about losing my ESF, I'll just uh, bail out and continue fighting on the ground. So now flying in Planet 2 requires a lot of experience and practice. And uh, that's one of the things that you've seen throughout uh, the two years the Planet 2 have been out now, is that pilots have learned how to get better at controlling their ESFs, maneuvering, aiming, handling their weapons, taking uh, advantage of the environment and some such, while at the same time the way most people use anti-air today is basically the same as two years ago. And I guess it might be in the nature of uh, the weapon, uh, the way you use flak is that it doesn't really encourage creativity. Instead the normal reaction when it comes to using anti-air is if it doesn't work with anti-air, more anti-air. Oh, 
Huh. I have one burst max and they are completely outnumbering us and now the air is gone. You guys wanna go to Amish? Yeah, I'll just uh, use my burst. You know what? Pull a burst max or something at uh, Southgate checkpoint for a while. Can, can sure. you do it? Can you do it? Yeah, I'm coming. Yeah. Let's let, let's see what we can do here. There's a hovering galaxy. I wanna I wanna take it out quickly. Come to, go go through the teleporter. Yeah, I went through. I'm coming back. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right galaxy, with you galaxy, here. galaxy, up to the. Yeah. Okay. One, now. two, three. Up. Go. Run, bitch, run. They're so not used to this. You can tell it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah, that's side, it. side, side. Reloading. Above us. Yeah. Kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. Yeah. yeah, this is what uh, VS and yeah. MC do most and of the That's time. the funny thing is, imagine these guys do this to us all the time and they are struggling killing us. Yeah. There's a, a, a site, I'm going for it now. Yeah, but there are tanks here also. Okay, yeah, shoot, yeah, it, shoot, yeah, it, shoot, yeah. It, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. He's whining at me. Haha, bitch. <laughs> oh, watch out guys. Get in, get in, get in, get in. Uh, go in. Yeah. yeah. So when it comes to choice of anti-air, I have always preferred the Max. Not because it's the best, uh, it has the best anti-air weapons, but because of its versatility. Once I'm done with, uh, you know, my anti-air duty, I can just quickly switch to whatever anti-infantry or anti-vehicle weapon I prefer and uh, continue fighting. Now, if you're one of those uh, players that really hate air and hate air to ground, um, keep this in mind in the future. If you see a lot of air uh, over a base farming infantry, Take a look at the population before you make a judgment. Also, compare the amount of air you see with the amount of vehicles on the ground. Now, one of the things that I think is the most important thing when it comes to being successful with anti-air is positioning. Now, for this example, I'm going to choose this building, and it's because this is one of the most common structures in Planetside 2. So now you want to be in a place where you can clearly see the sky in all directions, but you also need to have access to cover. A key is to be able to get to cover quickly. That's why you want to be in a place like where you see me standing here and not on the other side here where the stairways go up because then you have to run down the stairs. That takes a little bit longer. And that's completely unnecessary. It's better to just jump down because that will make it a lot harder for your enemies to actually finish you off once they start hitting you. Now if there's an uh, intense fight, I would recommend uh, any engineer and medics or whatnot to stand down here all the time. And for the engines it's important to put the ammo packs in places where you can also repair the maxes without dying yourself. I many times see ammo packs being placed in really really bad positions. It's easy to get both yourself and your teammates killed that way. Now as a max, don't expect to be repaired if you are not in safety. Don't expect to be revived if you die in a stupid position. Just because you want to go Jolo, that doesn't automatically mean that the medics nearby are ready to do the same. And there are of course many places where you can follow the same principle of just uh, making sure that you can get to safety quickly and still be able to shoot your, the aircraft. And sometimes you have to just cut in and out of a spawn room like this. There's a lot of people that are like, yeah, a spawn room warrior and blah blah blah. But if there are like three liberators spamming Zephyr uh, shells, right at where you exit, then there isn't all that much else you can do, at least for the time being. Now I do know, I do understand, even though I am a pilot, I do understand that air can be very very frustrating for people playing on the ground. Now the thing of it is though, and uh, bear with me here, dealing with air is actually quite easy. However, when you are in an anti-air unit, you are very vulnerable against basically everything else than what you are supposed to shoot at. And that's the thing about that everything else, being tanks, maxes, infantry and whatnot, is that they are normally so much more than the aircrafts that you're supposed to deal with. Another thing to keep in mind is that anti-air is also a lot stronger combined with the friendly air than it is without. You can clearly see this in the next example, how um, one of my squad mates is uh, going to start fighting this site. And of course the site is forced to flee when it takes flak, otherwise it will die either to me or the mossy. And of course when it's fleeing, it turns into a chase and the site has no chance of shooting back. Now for the next part of the video, I want to show you some reaver gameplay. I'm using the air hammer here and I'm flying together with Chun. You gotta keep in mind here that both me and Chun, we are very experienced pilots. 
and every once in a while an opportunity presents itself and when it does we know how to take advantage of it. Now, there are many players that uh, think that if you spawn an anti-air unit you should automatically, no matter how you play, automatically you're going to beat any aircraft because that anti-air unit is designed to kill aircrafts. Me on the other hand, I think it should be up to the players to make use of the weapons. Now, this is my personal opinion. I think any weapon or vehicle should be as good as the player using it. Now I do understand that there are a lot of players that disagree with this and I can also accept the fact that there are weapons that are a lot easier to use than other weapons and that is because the most experienced and the least experienced players will play on the same server. So if all the weapons are skill based then the, the least experienced players will have no chance, it will be no fun. On the other hand it will make it a lot harder for these less experienced players to get into some of these harder play styles if those a little bit harder play styles are too easy to counter. Now when it comes to Planetside 2 I have been part of these discussions since beta and there are no simple answers. And yeah that Max standing completely still in a bad position. Of course it's easy to get revived there but aside from that I know that uh, a burst of Max isn't the kind of unit that brings out the most creativity from uh, most players. But you gotta realize this game is two years old now. A lot of players have learned how to adapt to how this game is played out, but many times when I see people using anti-air, it almost feels like it's 2012 again. Anyway, that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it, so uh, yeah, bye for now. Fan vad vansinnig fan det är alltså. Ja, det, det här är faktiskt vem det är bästa jag har sett här i Alltså...